Welcome to this talk called Mind the Generation Gap. My name's Helena Gore. I'm a Microsoft 365 Adoption and Change Consultant with Changing Social. I'd like to begin by thanking our sponsors, Script Runner, DQ Global, Proxima3, Redspire, Agilisys and Hitachi Solutions. Thank you so much for your contributions to the Scottish Summit. I'd like to begin by talking about my career and um, judging by the year I began, I'm not sure I'm the person jumping for joy in that, um, in that picture. I don't think my knees would um, cope. Um, I've been really fortunate. I've had uh, an amazing career so far and uh, I have done a great many things, possibly a jack of all trades and a master of none. However, I have had the opportunity to uh, not only work in a lot of business sectors, but also do a lot of different things. And I'm really pleased that I can now sit as a Microsoft 365 Adoption and Change Consultant with all those experiences under my belt. And I think actually the, the, the best career moment so far was working alongside Francis Cave, the most fantastic XML uh, consultant. And between us, we built the production system uh, that was used at the House of Commons for producing the order paper. And that system was produced using uh, Microsoft Word. And yes, it had a lot of templates. Yes, it had a lot of styles. And yes, it had some really, really good VBA in it. Uh, and I'd like to give a shout out to Emma Rochford for her endless support in helping me learn how to work with VBA. But what we were able to do was to work alongside the incredible uh, publishing specialists at the House of Commons. And between us, that system ran from 2003 to 2018, and it never failed. And I just, I know I owe a great deal to Microsoft for my career, um, because it's a, enabled me to be a citizen developer for years and years, and um, I've loved it. I came to the Scottish Summit last year and I loved it um, and I learned a great deal about just how amazing um, people are when it comes to developing Power Apps and doing a lot of the technical uh, work within Microsoft. And as an adoption and change consultant, um, I wanted to speak, um, I'm not sure why, <laughs> I must be mad, <laughs> but I wanted to, 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 to speak about adoption and change. and. I wanted to choose a topic that really has been very important to me in how I relate to the people I work with. And I love working and talking and meeting people of all ages. That fascinates me because what makes me tick is not what makes younger people tick. And secondly, I think that we urgently need to adapt to our changing workplace and adopt new ways of working now um, because of the circumstances the world has found itself in, but also paving the way for, for the future. We've got new uh, generations arriving in the workplace and they work very differently from the older generations. And I wanted to start with a couple of questions. Um, I thought, well, that's fine thinking about generations, but um, perhaps we, I need to put some context around it. So I asked a couple of questions to myself, you know, is there a pattern to the way in which different generations approach change? And secondly, how does each generation uh, approach technology? You know, because ultimately we all have our own unique experiences of that. So how can we harness these uh, um, to, to reach the generation so that we can create positive change and ways to quickly adopt new ways of working? Now, before I know this is recorded um, and I know the reasons behind it, because I'm actually building this in bits because I keep stumbling over my words and what I'm trying to, to say or think about. And I haven't got an audience in front of me. But what, I, what, we, what we would love to know is who is in the room. And uh, if you are watching this, if you could lift um, your devices and use your QR readers or your cameras and just snap that QR code and contribute to the questionnaire that's behind it. There are only six questions. Um, love to hear what your experiences have been around change and any, and any sort of thoughts you have about what it's like to work with different generations. 
So I've been digging around actually, and there's a, the, there is a bit of a gap around um, stats for generations. But what's really interesting at the moment is if we look at the four workplace generations, so we've got the baby boomers who are now age 58 to 76. And yes, that is, that is the generation I'm coming from. So I either look fantastic for my age or I'm at the lower end of that generation. Um, we also have Generation X, uh, they're 42 to 57 now. And then we've got the, the millennials and, and Gen Z. And it's actually these two generations that make up 70% of the workforce um, was a stat I found um, from 2020. So we've really got to pay attention to the younger generations in terms of what they're bringing to the, work, to the workforce. Now, the second part of my questions were why change the way we work? And I think that we can all safely say that the global pandemic has been instrumental in changing the way we have worked in the last year. Yes, we were looking at digital transformation because of new technology, um, because we needed to find different ways of working, but that's been accelerated as a consequence of us all having to work from home. And so that changing work environment has, has created an impetus to think about changing the way we work. You know, we don't have a photocopier available. And in fact, has anyone printed anything recently? I certainly haven't. I've actually, I'm using Office Lens. If I do get a letter through the post and I have to reply to it, the first thing I do is pick up my phone, photograph the piece of paper, and then I digitize the rest of whatever that process might be. So I think we are all experiencing new ways of working, either in big ways or small ways that affect us as individuals. And, um, and the second thing is that different people are doing work. You know, as the older generations are retiring, we're getting younger generations and their view of the world and the technology they have experienced is giving them a very different view of how to work. And then again, we've got um, we've got new types of work. You know, innovation is happening at all the time, all around us, and the way in which work is um, is changing um, is really visible, and certainly right now. So, how do we approach ways of working and the use of available te technology? And we bring to technology what we know in the real world. And I have to say that's one of my favourite photographs that I took because. Progress can be really surprising. You know, I picked up that can upside down and the tool I have always used for opening a can is to reach for a can opener. So you can imagine my surprise when I finally having, you can see that I failed to actually get the can open. And you can imagine my surprise when I tipped it up to empty the contents only to find the ring pull at the other end. So it's always worth thinking that what is one, gener one generation's answer is another's question. Do you know that's worth thinking about? And also what motivates one leaves another cold. We're gonna find out a little bit more about that in a second. Now, I think the, the next thing we need to think about is uh, assumptions. And I think that assumptions are really dangerous. They usually get me into terrible trouble. And this idea that millennials are digital natives was challenged for me last year when I received that text from my daughter, who's 26, to say that she had just found the sum function in Excel. And I was suitably horrified by that piece of information. So I think that when we think of generations, we need to accommodate our assumptions in our own minds when we think of them and to catch ourselves doing that because it can save us from some difficulty we may end up having with them if we hold on to those assumptions. So I'd really like to look at t technological change for the different generations. I was a baby boomer and yes, I started my working life using a typewriter and real filing cabinets. Um, we then moved on to PCs and DOS, and for anyone in the younger generations, DOS was the operating system that we used when PCs first came along. And it was a black screen with a little, um, a little tiny um, thing in the top left-hand corner that flashed on and off, and that's where we started. And from there, we had those huge upheavals in move, moving from DOS to, to Windows to the graphical user interface that we take for granted today. And I remember those days, I remember people waving mice in the air, trying to get things to work or trying to see 
behind windows on their screens because because that that's what made sense at the time. And as a baby boomer, baby boomers have gone through probably every single version of Microsoft Office. That's a lot of versions of Office um, to to uh, use and and use without thinking. That idea of unconscious competence can be set with uh, ongoing use of, of tools. Now with Generation X, um, they've also come along further, you know, and and again they've had this long period of time working with Microsoft Office. Millennials, on the other hand, have come in when it's not um, disks or losing data or uh, breaking things and data being lost because they've been able to save their work on network drives. So that sort of idea of loss of data is not such a big thing the, the younger we go. And of course, with Gen Z, you've got the online Microsoft Office um, and they're probably saving to the cloud. Now, there's my assumption. Dangerous. Uh, particularly when I got to some of the answers in the questionnaires, I was very surprised by some of them from the Gen Z um, generation. The thing that's worth pointing out here is that we've got six year olds uh, at school who are coding. And by its very nature, of course, coding is about automating things. And these um, this generation is going to come into the workforce with this idea of being able to automate. So. We did send out this questionnaire. Uh, we did get, uh, we looked at a few stats, straw poll half the time, but also some of the quotes and some of the apps that were mentioned. And, and so let's take a look at, at what came back. So one, one of the questions we've asked is what helped you cope with change? And with baby boomers, they were used to getting big fat uh, training manuals and also attending two day courses on Word and Excel foundations. I remember delivering an awful lot of those in my time in the early 90s. Generation X, interesting what they chose. Um, they, they did a lot with colleagues showing them how to do things and also they learned by reading and experimenting. And I think experimentation for Generation X is a big thing. We then get to the millennials who who are looking at, you know, yes, they've had some adoption and change because that has become part of the process of introducing change to organizations. But they like training uh, and in some cases they do like to find out for themselves. Now, Jen said, you know, I think of Jen Z of the, uh, the generation who's permanently looking at their, at their screens. And what I found really interesting is some of their answers. Uh, in this questionnaire, one of which was, I want colleagues to show me alongside some training. So both millennials and Gen Z like training, whereas the baby boomers and the Generation X are, are, are not as focused on that as a way to learn. We then asked, what was it like uh, in terms of having a, a challenging technological change? And all three of the older generations all said changing jobs and or business sectors and learning new processes. The one that really surprised me and actually made me feel really tearful was the thought of the Gen Z finding it incredibly hard to work from home during lockdown. And it goes, and I just wonder whether the older generations, we have a, a level of resilience that we have built as a consequence of experiencing change more than once in our lives. Next, we've got collaboration. And here, I assumed that the baby boomers would um, would dictate letters to their PAs and have them type them up. And then there would be this disconnect uh, to that process. But actually, quite a lot of the baby boomers who did respond to the questionnaire said that they prepared the draft and then they shared the link with their colleagues rather than emailing the document round. So that surprised me because I thought I'd see one of the others uh, coming through on those questions. Generation X, they prepare the draft and then share the link with colleagues. That was good. And also to work with a single version of the truth. So there's some of that co-authoring coming out in the moment. Um, I also, uh, obviously, I'm not surprised by the millennials saying that they work on a single version of the truth uh, because I, the, the millennials I've seen work together are able to work in groups and to work in the moment they can work out loud and they can really make things move along very quickly in, by doing those things. Gen Z really surprised me. 
in that uh, they responded saying that they prepared the draft and then shared it as an email attachment with colleagues. Um, and again, I just wonder, you know, we, we make this assumption that Gen Z really tech savvy, they know what they're doing. And then we get these basic um, sort of decisions um, around business processes that aren't particularly functional. So it's one of the things that really started to make me think. So then I wanted to ask the question, well, can the different generations help one another? And, you know, for me, up at the at, at the top end of this, I do think of people who've been around, you know, I think of Francis Cave, the XML guru and colleague I've worked with. He was one of the safest pair of hands I think I've ever worked with um, because his knowledge on printing and publishing and typography was absolutely incredible. And I really valued his expertise. And I think that, that you know, we are that generate this generation, my generation, we are a safe pair of hands. And there are quite a few of us that are still motivated to keep working. Um, they say that uh, a way to a baby boomer's uh, motivation is certainly financial. Um, and we know we know business processes. We've been doing them for years. They may not be the ones we want to take forward, but we do know how to operate within a business process. And again, with you know, if we look at Gen X, they have quite a lot of those characteristics in terms of the longevity in business and what they've been doing. But we need to remember that Gen X, you know, when they say we are the original entrepreneurs, um, we should be asking them how they thought up those ideas they had and how they executed them, because that will really help with the millennials and the Gen Z to work out how they want to go forward with business. We then have the millennials, um, you have the energy, you have the numbers to implement change, you love working together and collaborating, and that energy is infectious. And I think that you can really show some of the older generations how to work in these new ways. We have Gen Z, um, and I like that idea of we are the future of this world, show us how to begin in the right way, and we will automate processes. We will automate processes, now, that's interesting and that will pave the way for things being done automatically. Now at Changing Social, we are involved in uh, helping our clients to adopt micro Microsoft Office 365, and we say within days, not months. We're very proud of the way that we actually do this work. Now the way we do this is that we are aware of all these new ways of working with the, and that Microsoft 365 can really support those ways of working. So if we look here at automation, the fact that Power Automate is accessible to business users, they can very quickly paddle in the shallows of uh, Power Automate and carry out and automate a great many tasks. If we've got Gen Z coming into the workforce, then we're going to have this opportunity for automation to take on a much bigger role. Um, and certainly um, the millennials that we've been working with are more than happy to jump in and start making the most of, of those tools. Working out loud in channels and team meetings, we've got the millennials who do that automatically. Um, some of the things we do with our clients is we create wall, wall sessions where we will just open a space with uh, and a period of time and we will work in a Teams meeting um, that is running, not necessarily to work through an agenda, but to give people the opportunity to sit in the same office, if you like. I've tried to put that in quotes as I spoke. You might just see me in the bottom um, right hand corner of the screen. But it's that idea of we're all working remotely at the moment. And actually, it's the thing that people are talking about that they really miss is sitting in a room and listening to other people breathe. And so we create these working out loud um, spaces where we can work quietly on our own work, but immediately ask questions when we come up against something. And it's so much more productive to be, have that question answered and then get on with whatever we're doing without having to wait for um, a scheduled meeting later. And the other thing that's incredibly important, something that Microsoft 365 can really help organizations with, of course, is um, communications because of the tools that come within Microsoft 365 in the form of SharePoint. You've got Yammer, you've got Company Communicator, which is a fantastic app for, for getting really urgent uh, messages out to people. 
you know, and here at, at Changing Social, we work in all these different um, themes, if you like, is what we call them, to help companies focus in on certain activities. And so when we talk about Microsoft apps and the generations that gravitate towards or away from them, we can begin to see how the younger generations are adopting these new, they're very quick to jump into these new ways of working. Possibly some of the older um, members of a workforce will need to be encouraged to come and join in. And there's a little thing there saying the danger is that the younger generations think they know the technology, but sometimes they have gaps. So what we really want to do is to create a consistent process. Uh, and one way to achieve that is by looking at what are the tools for the job. We want to get everyone on board. It's not all about the technology. We do need to think about governance and what the rules are for an organisation. And the best way to prevent cottage industry is to create and uh, work through use cases. And I've got a great example. I walked into an organization. I found three people sitting in a row doing the same job differently using Microsoft Excel. And the problem with that was that when one of them went on holiday, the others couldn't do the job um, in their absence. So it really is important to join those things up and to and to prevent those cottage industries springing up. And a great way to do it is actually to, to make full use of uh, the Microsoft 365 Learning Hub to bring in Microsoft Pathways, but also the success stories. Um, and I noticed there's a new uh, lookbook that will really help companies set up those success stories. At Changing Social, we use adoption and uh, change approach using these eight pillars. Now, the first pillar is that of the sponsor. And in fact, we found that it's not always people in the baby boomer or the Gen X generations that fulfill that role of sponsor. We at Changing Social, our MD is actually a millennial. Actually, most of my colleagues are millennials. But that sponsor role is absolutely essential because with it comes the whole drive for change and it's being sanctioned from the top down. The next pillar we have are the digital champions. And I have a slide that we'll come on to next, just to run through the others. Um, coaching for line managers, comms, absolutely essential, and training. And we can see that those are what used to form the old approach to change. Um, and we also can scoop up resistance management, adoption, measurement, and monitoring through analysis. And much of that can actually be done or via the admin console, um, the Microsoft admin com console. So that's really helpful. And then we've got those rewards and recognition at the end, a millennial favorite. So when we talk about who is going to make the change happen, this is where we go into, well, what makes a digital champion? And a digital champion is not someone who needs to be hugely technical. A digital champion is simply someone who is interested in change, is maybe interested in technology, but doesn't need the skill. We're really keen at Changing Social that uh, we don't leave anyone behind. And the whole purpose of adoption and change engagement is that it gives digital champions the opportunity to build out their skills, to work on use cases that will improve the way they work, and then drive that out and deliver that across the business to their colleagues. The way we do that at Changing Social is we use the ProSci ADCAR framework and we have adoption specialists who are certified in this framework. Now, the way we do this is the ADCAR stands for awareness, desire, knowledge, ability and reinforcement. So if we begin with awareness and desire, what we're doing is we're looking at how to reach people. So you've got the sponsor-led communications in the first instance, but we also need to think about what generations do when it comes to consuming news. So what might wait well work for older generations in terms of emails, you may find that Yammer is a better engagement tool for the younger generations. 
Likewise, you know, how do we read news? Um, that might need to change across the board. So there is a journey, uh, an adoption and change journey that might need to take place. With Gen Z X, what we have is we have these um, entrepreneurial um, groups of people. And so what we need to do is find something cool to show them. Now, in fact, millennials and Gen Z, they're so switched on and connected to technology we need to find something that will really turn their heads in Microsoft. So Art of the Possible can be a really good uh, place to start for quite a few of the different generations. What's in it for me? That's really important, particularly with Gen X, uh, because they are always seeking a work-life balance. And actually, they have increasingly numbers of dependents um, to look after. So that becomes a very important thing to do. In the case of millennials, they are often motivated by recognition and awards and things like that. So when it comes to gamification and awards, that will really please the millennials. Uh, and quite a few millennials will join up to a digital champion program if there is some kind of form of recognition or some kind of award around that. So when it comes to knowledge and ability, we need to think about how people like to learn. So you've got a number of the older generations who said they like to read notes. So if you're a millennial and you have to prepare notes for other generations, then the good news is you can use Windows Steps Recorder as a way of preparing those notes. And then we've got explainer videos. Um, I think for Gen X who go and find out for themselves that actually some of those explainer videos would be very useful to meet that need. Uh, we have um, the new way of learning for the millennials and also for Gen Z who like to have training. Now, obviously, those two day courses that the baby boomers used to get in the early 90s are not an option. But what we can do is we can deliver much shorter briefing sessions where they can ask questions in the room itself. And then we've got the working out loud uh, way of working. And for Gen Z who really like to drop in, they like to be able to talk with their line managers on a daily basis, basis if not more, then um, creating um, a space for them to come and ask questions or just to um, connect with their line manager will be extremely important. And it would really help to put learning and information into those sessions as well. When it comes to checking ability, as I mentioned, most of the time you look at, you look at ability through statistics. Has there, can you see the change from people learning something and then using it. And we have reinforcement. And all I can say here is keep it simple. You know, in order to reinforce change, then it is best when it's positive as opposed to negative. We do need to pick up any resistance by uh, introducing mitigating tactics. So encouraging engagement through the art of the possible. We have self-reflection for those who do need to think about what they know or maybe what they don't know. We play a great game at uh, Changing Social called I've Learned Something New Bingo. And when you learn three new things in a session, you're allowed to leap out of your chair and start running madly around the room sh shouting bingo. And finally, simple steps. If you have got uh, different generations who are nervous, and let's not just blame the old the oldies, um, it really is important to keep those steps as simple as possible. And uh, one way to do that is with quick tips or people just knowing how to reach out and help others who are nearby. The journey I've been on in learning about the different generations. I am fascinated. It's something that we're rolling into changing social and rolling into our adoption and change in a far more meaningful way. And um, we're really excited to take this forward and we're going to continue carrying out research to learn a lot more about the generations, not just the ones that are here today, but the ones that are coming tomorrow. 
If you'd like to know anything more about us at Changing Social, do reach out. Love to hear from you. And I uh, just want to say thank you very much for letting me speak today. And I hope that we're now going to move on to some questions.